Good evening and welcome tonight. Federal government delays fears of heightened inflation as a result of huge spending ahead of the 2015 general elections. The nation celebrates Nigeria's second military leader. The president describes him as a committed statesman interested in the unity of the country. Wife of the president, Patience Jonathan, visits South Africa, commiserates with families of victims of synagogue building collapse. And Spanish nurse, the first person to contract Ebola outside West Africa, tests negative. General Yakubu Gowan is a good example of an elderly statesman and a true patriot that should be emulated by Nigerians. Those are the exact words of President Goodluck Jonathan as he addressed the gathering at a Thanksgiving service today in honor of General Gowan at the National Christian Center in Abuja, Nigeria. General Gowan, who just turned 80, is the second military leader of Nigeria. But our State House correspondent, Chukuma Onekwasi, has the report on today's Thanksgiving service. The processional hymn signposting the Thanksgiving service in honor of General Yakubu Gowan, the man who was given to Nigerians as head of state at the time the country was plunged into war in 1966. <laughs> Today, General Gowan is 80 years of age, and all, including the nation's number one, have come here to hail the power that has sustained General Gowan all these 80 years. Apart from the variety of songs that graced the occasion, there were prayers of worship and thanksgiving to God for giving Nigerians a man who fought to unite the great country called Nigeria. Prayers for peace in Nigeria, Africa, and the world. Tributes to the celebrant centered around General Gowan's goodness. High point of the service was the president's recognition of General Gowan's statesmanship. And Gowan did that very well. At the end of the war, of course, the three R's, rehabilitation, re reconciliation, and reconstruction came up. And that was the emphasis. It was not issue of defeating an opponent or crushing an opponent, but the issue of rebuilding a nation that was devastated due to financial disagreement. And one thing that marked one very clearly is that it did, it did he was the head of state then, but he was totally committed to the issue of keeping Nigeria together. And that's why after leaving the, after dropping the gun, he picked up even a stronger to keep this country together. Immediately he left as a military head of state, he picked the, the most formidable instrument for and he comes up with the Nigeria praise. For the celebrant, it's only faith in God that has kept him going. All the prayers that have been said for me, for my family, all the encomiums that have been showered on me, I honestly, sincerely feel very humble. But gratitude to God at Almighty God, it is to Him that all thanks and gratitude should return. The general's life is said to have shown that those who trust in the Lord shall never be disappointed. As they depart from the church premises, the prayer seems to be that God grants him many more years and indeed grants Nigerians the kind of peace that General Gowan stood for all these years. Chukuma Onrebusi, Channel's Television News. Congratulations are in order for the military head of state 
Now to matters of security. For many Nigerians, successful in maintaining a ceasefire as agreed by the federal government and the Boko Haram sect a few days ago would go a long way towards ensuring the release of the Chibok girls who have been in captivity for over 170 days. Today, the Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, Mr. Kabiru Turaki, not only reaffirmed the government's commitment in maintaining the ceasefire, his, or he also gave assurance that a lot will be achieved on both sides. The Sarkin Hausa of Lagos, Sunny Kabir, who led the Arawa Council of Chiefs in the southwest of the minister in Abuja, also drew home efforts made by his council in curbing Boko Haram's activities. Unless you have peace, then you can never have development. And without development, there can be no progress. And so at the end of the day, what you have will be retrogression. And so that is why Mr. President and this federal government is not only conscious, but is alive to his responsibilities of ensuring that the lives and properties of all law-abiding Nigerians are protected wherever they may be in this country. Now, the governor of Kaduna State, Mukta Yero, says for high level of education to be restored in the country, the National Assembly must consider passing a legislation that would compel policymakers to enroll their children into public schools. The governor explained that until this is done, Nigeria's education system will continue to nosedive. He condemned a situation where policymakers take their children to private schools without properly funding the public ones. He said this does not augur well for the education sector. Governor Yero made the comments when the House Committee on Education visited the state on an oversight function to the federal tertiary institutions in the state. Meanwhile, families of South Africans who died in the synagogue church building collapse in Lagos have been assured that their loved ones will be returned for proper burial. Nigeria's First Lady, Mrs. Patience Jonathan, gave the assurance when she paid the victims' families her condolences at a special church service in honor of visiting African First Ladies in Johannesburg, South Africa. Our correspondent in South Africa, Betty Debia, reports. It was a huge celebration at the church, even at short notice. It's not every day African first ladies come calling. And the first ladies took charge. The First Lady of Congo Brazzaville, Antoinette Sasunges. The host, Nompomelelo Mantuli Zuma. And Nigeria's First Lady, the Impatience Jonathan, brought a message of condolence from Nigeria to the families of those who died in the synagogue tragedy in Lagos. The pain that you feel is the same pain that the people of Nigeria feel. In commiserating with the bereaved, I must commend the maturity and understanding with which all concerned persons have taken the accidents. She also advocated peace in Africa, starting from the family. Preach peace to your children. Preach peace to your husband. Preach peace to your wife. Around you, there should be peace. Closing the special service, the leader of the church, Bishop Ntrantla Klapo, prayed for peace in Africa in song. The visiting first ladies have since returned to their respective countries.
from Alexandra, South Africa, Betty Dibia, Channels Television News. And we have this just in that the president, Sir Goodluck Jonathan, is meeting with PDP governors in the presidential villa in Abuja. It's not clear what the agenda of the meeting is, but our correspondent in uh, the State House, uh, Chukumana Kose, tells us the governors of the PDP, all of them, are in that meeting. We'll keep you updated on the story. Again, the president, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, is meeting with all the governors of the PDP at the presidential villa. The agenda for that meeting is still unclear, but our correspondent is on the ground and he'll be keeping us updated on proceedings. Now, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Miriam Mokhtar, has been accused of treating Nigerian judicial officers like kindergarten children. Former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Joseph Daudu, has threatened to file a court action against the CJN if the trend continues. Mr. Daudu, who is the coordinator of Rule of Law and Development Foundation, says the Chief Justice has been too involved in the administrative duties of other courts. While the foundation agrees that there should be discipline in the system, it must not amount to unnecessary witch hunt of judges, it says. In the meantime, perhaps a huge sum of money would be expended by politicians during the 2015 general elections, but that would not lead to inflation, as all necessary measures have been put in place to check inflation rates. The Minister of Finance, Dr. Ngozi Okonjewala, told this to a gathering in Washington, D.C., at the end of the IMF World Bank meeting that the nation's budget has been implemented as approved by the National Assembly. She assured Nigerians and members of the international community that the country's financial system remains stable. It's barely four months the 2015 general elections. Preparations for its success are ongoing with possible huge spending by politicians. But there is no cause for alarm as the Minister of Finance and the Coordinating Minister for the Economy assured that the activities leading to the polls will not in any way lead to an increase in inflation rate. For the election, we obviously have to finance those things that will enable the state to deliver a good election. So financing of INEC and its needs, uh, financing of security so that they can be, people can have a safe election, all the needed things. But as far as spending, uh, through the budget. Um, I think uh, so far we are in October and we are just running the budget the way it should be run and I, we hope to continue in the same way. While prices of oil at the international markets are falling in recent times, Dr. Iwell has shown that there is a contingency plan to avoid shocks that are likely to come with a fall in oil prices. Eight, nine years ago now, we proposed the development of the excess uh, crude account as a contingency measure for us to put in savings. Now, you know, when we had the global financial crisis in 2008 to 2010, the account had a considerable amount of money and was able to save the country by allowing access to uh, expenditure of those monies to cushion the country. Nigeria was one of the few countries that did not have to go to the International Monetary Fund or the World Bank for assistance because we were able to draw on these savings. The governor of the central bank also gave his words on the nation's financial stability. He is optimistic that key sectors of the economy, such as a Greek oil and gas and the solid minerals sector, have played a key role in achieving all of these. In recovery in the, um, um, in, the, in the world economy, in some places weak, some places fragile, and of course in some uh, places it's been very good for them, like in the United States and in the United Kingdom, and uh, a lot of things um, have been learned. But there are certain risks that have been identified, risks that are that, uh, particularly in the, in the financial system, risks um, that, mean, that means that we need to do a lot more. Uh, particularly in ensuring that we, con we continue to sustain the financial system stability that we have, um, we have um, worked very hard to achieve. Government officials have continued to thumb up the performance of the nation's economy, saying it has done well. What many Nigerians hope to see is a translation of all of these achievements for the improvement in the lives of the ordinary Nigerians. In part two after the break, Lagos governor says it should be given credit for providing better housing and education in the state. That's in a moment. Please join us again.
Thank you.